All right, I am going to lead you through installing Postgres, SQL, and PG Admin. So this is a clean copy of Windows. It doesn't have to be clean, but that's what we have here. I am going to go to uh, Postgres SQL dot org. Okay, and we want to download it. So let's download and we want Windows. And we will do the most current Windows. Uh, so we'll just go I just need to figure out why that gives me that. So we want to download the installer. Now for the installer, we want 1103 for Windows 64. When it comes up, we want to run. Installing this is not hard. In real life, you should make sure that your system is uh, appropriate, that you have the proper resources, uh, that you know exactly what's, what you're doing when you set it up. But in general, this will run on almost anything. So yes, I'm going to let it make changes, and it should open the installer very soon. Installing things is always quite boring. So. But Postgres is one of the most uh, powerful open source databases there is, and I've been using it a lot. We'll be using it this summer. So, come on, open up the installer. Might be behind here. Uh, not yet. There it is. So it's setting up the C++ because it was written in C++. Okay, so then we just, here we go next. We're just going to let it go where it wants, which is C, Program Files, Postgres, uh, SQL 11. We're going to install all of these, including the PG Admin, which we'll be using. We will do next. Uh, the, this is where the data goes, and that's fine. We need to give it a password, and I really recommend for uses in class, P-A-S-S-W-0-R-D-1. Need to retype it, P-A-S-S-W-0-R-D-1. You can use whatever uh, password you want, but if you forget it, you're going to be in trouble. We'll use the default port. Uh, we'll use the default locale. It gives us all the installation information. We do next. And we do next again. And generally this doesn't take too long. Again, this can be done on Windows. It can also be done on Mac or Ubuntu, although it's at a, in Ubuntu you'd use command lines to install it. So we'll watch the green line move across the screen slowly. Oh, I drank a little coffee. When it's done, it's done. We could just do this. Um, We can just test it out, open up the server, and look at it. That's as far as this video will go, is just set up the server, set up PG Admin. <clears throat> we'll look at installing databases in another video. Slowly, slowly goes the green line. 
Again, this is fast compared to some programs, but it's still not like instant. Especially in a virtual machine. <clears throat> the other thing is, as I said, it does not need a virtual machine on your own computer. Um, you can install it directly onto your computer, again, whether it's a Mac or a PC or Unix. I'm only going to demo the uh, Windows install, however. So we're about halfway there. Again, it's really pretty boring and it's pretty self-explanatory. watching the video you might want to fast forward a little through this part just to get to the end of where it is installing. I'd say it's about two-thirds. Getting there, it's getting really close. actually says it's starting the database server now. The server runs in the background as a service. You can find it in the uh, under services in Windows. Sometimes on a laptop it'll self-stop and if that's the case you need to go to the services to start. So we are finishing. Now you do not have to do this. This takes you to give you um, If we go to next, oops, we must select an installation. So we've got our Postgres 11. And if we go next, it'll give you a set of applications that you can add. So like under add-on tools and utilities, you can get the PG agent and the PG bouncer. Those are actually could be useful. Uh, get different drivers. Um, you get different languages and stuff. There's all sorts of things you can add. We're not going to add those. Uh, so I am going to just cancel this and say yes. Then we're going to go to our programs and we're going to look down here for PG Admin. Actually, just Postgres and PG Admin will be inside of it. So I'm going to click on that.
it will launch into your default browser. It's not online, but it is a browser-based application. It may tell us that it's out of date when we get there. We'll see. And hopefully it won't take forever. So let's open it with Microsoft Edge because that's all I've got on here. Okay, so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So this is what PGA Admin looks like. Uh, we have servers. One of the first things we need to do is to link to our server. So let's try p at ssw0rd1. And it does, and we do have a couple of databases. We have the Postgres database, and we have, that's actually all we have. That's your default database. We're going to add more databases, and we're going to add other things. Notice that it has a dashboard where it gives you information about all your databases and all your sessions and activities. You can look at the properties of a um, of your database in your server. You can get SQL if you've done anything. You can get some stats about your server. Uh, if there are any dependencies, which there are not, and so therefore there are no dependents. So that's setting up the server. That's all there is to it and with the Postgres SQL. Um, I think we're good. So uh, one thing we should probably do this is just a good idea. Doesn't matter a whole lot, but I'm going to add a uh, role. So I'm going to create a login group role, and I'm going to create uh, the name will be Steve because that's the name on my of my the computer on the virtual machine. I would use your name. I'm going to do the same. P at SSW0RD1. Uh, for privileges, I am going to make them a super user. Uh, so let's make them a super user. And uh, we're going to let them log in. And uh, we will allow streaming replicant backups, even though I'm not sure we need to do that. So we have a new user now uh, that is the same person that owns the computer. I would do that for yours. Uh, just because it's good to not use the Postgres um, user. So the last thing I will do is on this, I will disconnect the server. And then I'm going to go to the properties. And under the connection, I am going to say that the username is Steve. And the role is Steve. So I'm going to save. Oh, we need the password. Somewhere we need to write the password. Uh, no, I guess we don't. So I'm going to save that. All right. And then we're going to reconnect. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to connect server. It's under the name for uh, Steve, so it's still the same password, p at ssw0rd1. I'm going to do OK. And now we are connected under, as Steve. We have all the same permissions as Postgres, but now we're under our own user. OK, so that is it. I am going to close this. So we'll leave it, close this, and we're done. That was easy, wasn't it? So I'm going to stop video.